And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. And we have another game. Today we're talking about Valdora. Valdora, Valdora. Another game about moving around and trading goods. Actually, Valdora is a pickup and delivery game. Basically, you are getting goods from one spot and then delivering them to another. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the pickup and delivery genre, uh, but I do find some of the games quite interesting. Now, Valdora, with its oh, yet another medieval theme, um, but it has really nice components, and I don't know how to describe playing it other than pleasant. It, ha it has a very strong vibe that I get from playing games like Ticket to Ride. I'm not saying it's even remotely as good as Ticket to Ride, don't get me wrong. Uh, but when I play it with my family or other people, it's the kind of game that people play and they go, oh yeah, that's fun. It's kind of a, a, a race game to see if you can get it done first. But it's just very enjoyable. There's Yes, there's points where you can mess someone else up, but not too much. And it's almost like you're in your own little world at some points. Uh, just going around and picking up and delivering. And I found that this is the kind of game that would fit under the gateway category. A game that if people haven't played many Euro games, this would be one to introduce them to because they would like it. And it looks really pretty. I wonder that it might be a flash in the pan uh, that we, people are enjoying it now, but they're not going to be real big fans of it in, say, a year. Um, but for now, let me show you what the game's like and you can decide for yourself. So here's the game board, and you can see scattered at different spots throughout the game board are gems of different colors. Now there's four, there's five cities, one is the city that you started, and then there's four other cities that are on the board, and each of these other cities has this really neat wooden book placed in the city. And in that book is a bunch of cards, and those cards are there to basically show what pages are like. So I can flip through the pages of a book like that as the game progresses. Now what players are trying to do is they're trying to get points and oh I know big shocker there. Well let's take a look at what a player has in front of him. Alright here's a typical player and here he is his player card and next to him over here he has his equipment or over here no over here we'll put his equipment and see the equipment there right now he has a pan for which he mines gold. Yay! So, that's all you get to start the game, along with some coins, and you begin. On your turn, you may move as far as you want, but you must stop at a city. You can't go through a city. So, for example, here I can go all the way to this city, or I could go here. I could move up over to this, this mine, I could go here, but I could not go up here, because for that, I would have to go into this city, and then there I'd have to stop at the city. So I can move where I want. If I stop at a place that has gems, I may take those gems as long as I have a place to put it. Now I said that I, you start with a gold, a gold pan, and so you can take a gold nugget if you have one, and then you would place it in your pan. Look at that. Woo! As the game progresses, you will have more and more equipment, like this, and then you would be able to take more gems if you stop at the right spot. So let's say I had all three of these, and I stopped at a spot that had gold, red, and the green stones. I could take all three of those. So that's one of the things you may do on your turn, provided you have the proper equipment. You are also allowed to go to one of these mines and refill your coin supply up to six coins. If you move to a spot where there are other players, you must pay each of those players a coin. So you need to make sure you have coins on hand. Coins are also useful because that is how you get commissions. Whenever you go to a city with a commission, you may take one of these commissions. What this means is this guy who lives in the red building wants one red stone. This guy who lives in the blue building wants one blue stone. Right? Most commissions are simply like that, although some commissions, like for example here, this guy simply wants a coin. And then there are white commissions, like this one here, where this gentleman wants a red, blue, and yellow stone. So whatever commission you take, and it costs you a coin to take a commission, you can also pay coins to turn pages, in case you don't like the top two. You can turn multiple pages by paying multiple coins. So that's basically the usage of coins, to get these commissions. To get the equipment, you go to the other cities over here that have the equipment, and there you can buy an equipment, but you notice the yellow band in the background. Equipment costs a gold nugget. 
So again, you can pay coins to flip the pages and buy the proper equipment. This equipment here lets you carry anything, but you have to pay three coins every time you pick that item up. And so there's different kinds of equipment you can get. So you're going to get equipment, or you're going to get commissions, or you can go deliver a commission. Let's say I have the commission to deliver a blue gem to the blue house. I have a blue gem. I go there, I deliver it. Once I do so, I put the gem in the field here. This is where all discards go. And then, as a bonus, I go over here to this little craftsman table. And since I delivered a blue one, I get to take this blue man. Now, why do I want this blue man? Well, at the end of the game, every color you have is worth 10 points. So you'd like to get one of all seven colors, if possible, because that's 70 points. But also, if I get two of the blue men, I can start the blue man group. No, I can also go and build the blue craft shop. See, I need two blue men to start that shop. Two white men to start that one. You need three of the orange, and you need five of the black to start those shops. This shop will give you points, but more importantly, let's say I have the blue workshop. Every time I deliver a blue good from then on, I also get one of these 10 bonus point chips. So if you concentrate in one color, you can really rack up the points. But as I said, you also want to get different colors because that's another way to get points. In fact, let's say I keep delivering blue and all the blue men are gone. Well, I need to take one so I go clockwise. Now I get a green guy every time I deliver a blue good. It's a pretty useful and interesting trick on how that works. Also on the board, there are several spots where you see ships. When you go to a spot with a ship, you can take a jewel, but you can take it from the discard pile in the middle. So let's say you run out of gold, which is a very good possibility during the course of the game. You can go here and take it for one ship, or the city in the middle, the city that you all start in actually, has two ships in it. Or No, I'm sorry, it only has one ship. You can take one there. I'm sorry, up here is where the two ships are. And you can take two goods of your choice from the middle. The game continues on until over here, there's only one pile of these craftsmen left. All the rest of them have been taken. At that point, we start scoring points. Points are very simple. Each contract that you deliver is worth a certain amount of points on it. Most of them are worth three points. The white ones, which you use three jewels for, are worth 15 points. You also get points for each color, like I mentioned. You get points for craftsmen. And any extra jewels you might have uh, give you uh, a point each. Whoever has the most points is the winner. Whew! That was a much longer description than I actually planned to give you. All right, it's very simple. You, you move, do a small action. Move, do a small action. So it's bam, 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 bam. Or it should be that way. Some people can slow it down. But it's really not that difficult. Go pick it up. The only time where you might slow down is when you're at a city and you're flipping pages to see which commission you want or which uh, item you want. But even then, it shouldn't be that difficult of a choice. Just pick one and take it. So overall, like I said, I don't mind playing the game. I don't mind picking up gems and going and delivering them. Uh, the workmen, getting the different color workmen to open shops. I don't really know what thematic sense that makes. But it, it's an interesting idea and you can go all for one color or try to spread out. Point scores in this game can vary, but they can also be really quite close as the game progresses. And these wooden books are just really super high quality. I'm very impressed with that. So I give the game a good, solid, good rating. <laughs> um, a better theme might have brought it up a little bit, but even I, I, I don't think even that would have done that much. It's just a, a decent game, very pleasant to play, but like I said, I think it's forgettable. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.